I'm Evan Henderson. I'm a sophomore here at North Carolina, and I wrestle 141. I first started wrestling in uh, third grade uh, because my brother started, like he started before me, and then we would always like fight. So then it's like, well, I want to get into it too. So we started uh, going, and then uh, in third grade we started wrestling. It was always like, who can do better, I guess. At first, I'm gonna say he was like a, a lot better than me. So it was always like I was trying to beat him or something like that. So he'd always get first at a tournament when we were little and then I'd get like second or third. Or... And then when we got older, it was like I started catching up. I'm going to say I passed him a little bit, but he's like still right there. Whatever time you left today, clock back five minutes. Five minutes. You want to hear ready to go at, at eight. Not, not, not eight. Let's go. My name is Robert Henderson. I'm a redshirt freshman here in North Carolina. As of now, it's been pretty, it's been going pretty well. Uh, not to where I want to be, but uh, if you're not a national champion, you're not to where you want to be. I mean, Evan still is working for more. I'm still working for more, as of everybody on the team. Instead of wrestling like one state champ, everybody's a state champ in this room. Like everybody's won something, everybody's done something in high school. So everyone's tough. I can remember coming in as a freshman and just getting my butt kicked. But uh, you know, after half a year, a whole year, well now I'm pretty much a little over a year and a half in here, I'm doing fine. I kind of feel like it, but like even though I don't like saying it, like I am my brother's keeper a little bit. Uh, even though like I don't like hearing that and he doesn't like hearing that, but he needs me as, as, as much as I need him for a lot of things. Evan needs Robert. I mean, Evan wouldn't make it without Robert. He needs Robert here, and Robert's like his um, anchor. They, they cannot be away. They would not do well separated. We need them both here. Even though Evan gets the results on the mat, Robert is a part of it, and, you know, and, and I think everyone knows that, and Evan knows it, and, and I know we know as a staff, and you know, Robert's a very valued member on, you know, of the team, especially, like I said, in the room, and, and for those reasons, just because he's, he's Evan's other half. I thought we wrestled really well overall. We had some good matches that we were able to come in and do well in. 
Mears looked really good tonight. He uh, hit a lot of nice moves. Joey Ward really opened up this time. I thought he wrestled really well. He was able to get a lot more attacks going. Overall, we wrestled really well as a team, I felt. When I picked this place as a school, uh, I was told that uh, by a lot of people that I'd made a mistake when I picked this place as a school because they, they really didn't have a strong wrestling tradition at all. And obviously that's something that a lot of uh, recruits like to see. They like to see wrestling tradition. They like to see success. You, you know, you want to come into a program that, that kind of has it going on. And uh, uh, I, uh, I took a risk and I, I really wanted to be uh, the catalyst to that. I wanted to be um, uh, a big part of that. And, uh, and being the first national champion, I was a big part of it, but I was not the only part of it. Last year, uh, at what I felt was pretty much where we hit rock bottom at ACC's, and some decisions needed to be made. And you know, the bottom line is you got to have the right people on the right bus in the right seats. And uh, looking back, uh, I don't feel like I've had the right people in the right seats. When I recruit guys, I try to recruit guys who want to be national champions. You know, and, and my big thing is I tell them this, UNC is going to offer you everything you need um, that you need at your disposal to be a national champion. We have excellent facilities, we have uh, excellent strength coaches, we have, um, if there's injuries, we have get excellent, uh, you know, training staff. The jump from high school to college is a big gap. And that gap, and here's one of the big reasons, we, you know, we, have a, we face Title IX a lot with wrestling, so it's, it's, it's really shrunk the programs down. You know, there used to be 350 Division I programs, now there's 77. So how you have to look at it is, if you're one of the starters on one of those programs, you're competing against the last 76 guys left who were quality wrestlers in high school and have made that jump to college. So it's not one flight of stairs anymore, it's 10 stories. I'm Nathan Kaiser, I'm a true freshman here, and I wrestle at 125 pounds. It's definitely a huge part of my life. It's whenever I'm not wrestling, whenever I take like a month off to let my body heal or just because I need a break, it feels awkward. It's not normal for me. I'm used to being, I'm used to being on the wrestling mat and wrestling all the time. Overall, I feel like this season, the college season, is a lot longer. What also makes it feel longer is it's a lot more drooling and like um, wears you out more on your body and your mind. You know, when I met Nathan, he was, he's got the one quality that I think a lot of coaches want, and he's coachable. And um, the one thing about him, the, the reason he's at where he's at right now is because if you show him something, he will immediately try to do it. I have a, a, basically a 10-year history with him. It was priority for me to get him to UNC. He wasn't a standout blue chip wrestler, but he was my blue chip guy because I knew what kind of type of, what quality I was getting. Nathan's a special kid, you know, and, and that, it's not because he's, you know, what, 27 and four. With, that's not even why he's special. The, the reason he's 27 and four is because he's special. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the national finals this year as a true freshman. He's just, he's a winner. Even though he was a high school star, there's a big difference of winning when no one expects you to win, and there's a big difference of winning when everyone expects you to win. Even for him, it's a big adjustment because he was a, a good high school kid that the nation didn't know. Now everyone in the country knows who Nathan Kreiser is. You see the show Swamp People? You know the two brothers, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell and with the long beards, they were squirrel hunting? I haven't watched uh, long enough to know any of them. But, uh, like, the two, there's, like, two brothers, and they have, like, the long white beards. And the one day they caught so many alligators, they filled their tags, so they went squirrel hunting. They're like, what are they doing with my brother, cop? And then, like, goes down, and he's got, like, 15 squirrels just, just dead. He's like, you know, I'm gonna sit my brother under a no pretty, and you don't get uh, hooked up, and then you don't pretty good fall there. Uh, how about duck dynasty when they go, uh, to them uh, beavers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot the shit out of the dam. Nothing more that I hate than beavers damming up my screen. <laughs> <laughs>
So, I mean, this is all training phase. This is all training now at this point, getting ready for HCC. This session today is 60 minutes. It's warm up, then a drill, then you're out of here this afternoon. It's live. There's no more. There's nothing else you can say to me. At this point, it's the most critical time in the season that it's short, it's sharp, and you're getting the most out of it. So I'll let you know that that drill, when you get to that point where I say, okay, now it's the drill. Now it's, that's when your partner is defending, he's not giving you a, your first shot, you're working for everything you go out. That's what's going to get you over the hump. Technically, on, on my side, these guys got a couple things they want to show you. But for me, it's still, we're, we're, we're spending way too much time to put that up. There's a lot of guys I thought would be like good in college and they're not or they're not as good they weren't as good in high school and they're better in college. It's all about your work ethic in college in the college room and how you handle the pressure and the grind of the season. So I'm gonna say last year I didn't under, really understand the pressure and grind. I mean, for as good as I was I could have easily I mean I beat guys that are on the podium and I didn't I didn't play. Um, but like, doesn't say I won't ever play. Stand over Stand, don't sit. Stand, stretch, stretch as you sit your way, bounce around a little bit. Keep that sweat going. I'd say kind of a normal practice would be get down there. We like to get down there a little early. Sometimes the coaches will talk just for a couple of minutes right before practice. And then coaches will usually put us through a drill. The second half of the season, as we're winding to the end, the practices are getting a little shorter, hour and a half, hour 15, but the pace is higher the whole time, so we're working. I don't think it matters how good you are. This is a sport that's just infused with pressure. I always tell the guys, you know, your opponent isn't the guy you're out there wrestling. He's just, he's just a guy that's creating a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, stress for you. He's a guy that's creating some adversity for you. Uh, your, your real opponent is yourself. If I'm a starter, and this season's winding down, I'm trying to exhaust my partner to make sure I can't keep up with you. The minute in our sport you start reflecting on your ranking, or people's expectations, or your own personal expectations, you're heading down the wrong path. So sometimes we get two practices a day, and um, showing up now for the second one is probably going to be mostly live. Just going there and uh, hanging out, uh, start grinding and uh, work through it. We really get a good sweat in, get the just get a good workout in, and uh, have the rest of the day to relax and work on some homework. So ready to do it. Well, you know, you got to try to keep it fun because it is. It, it, there's not a lot fun about wrestling. It's you know, it's a grind. I mean, especially 7:30 in the morning, you know, and you're cutting weight and you know you're tired and you got to go in there and perform it. It's it, you got to you got to try to separate that. And I think we do. Um, first of all, my staff has a great sense of humor, uh, and that usually is uh, evidenced by. Uh, busting chops. Um, there's a n just a non-stop, constant busting of chops. Oh, Rhino said he would. Yeah, just have Rhino. Rhino, no, seriously. No, I'm serious. Rhino, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. Rhino, take it.
reps or two sets in for a warm up, and we're gonna be four by four. Four by four, let's get two sets of warm up in first. You guys got two minutes to get warmed up with dumbbells. Four by four. Well, physical demands are, you know, what I base my program around. You know, the shoulder strength and, and mobility has to be tremendous for wrestlers. Grip strength, arm strength has to be amazing. The team in general is awesome to work with. They understand, I think, what, what I'm trying to do. And um, they trust me a lot, and which makes it good for me because then I can trust them. I never have to worry about coaching effort for wrestlers, especially our group. The mat itself is a high energy demand. They have a lot of pressure to perform well on the mat, so when I'm in with them, then I can kind of tailor them a little bit. I think Nathan has an outstanding work ethic. Um, since day one, he's been, he's, he comes in and does exactly what he's told to the best of his ability and communicates with me if, if there's something that uh, he feels isn't right. Evan is, a, is another kid that has an outstanding work ethic. He's relentless in the weight room. He's, when we have our circuits, I, I still remember Evan, as soon as I uh, start that clock, Evan just sprints off and just, he's got blinders on the entire time, he's relentless. You know, I think it kind of uh, resembles how he wrestles a little bit too. Henderson trading, he's got that cradle locked up. Steber in trouble, Henderson with the cradle locked up. No takedown yet, there is the takedown. Two takedown, Evan Henderson, and he's going suicide with it. Well, oh, ever since, like, I was taught by this one guy in PA. He was a head coach at, like, a high school, Bell Vernon, which is about an hour away from me. And now he's at, like, Shippensburg High School. And he taught me it. He taught me a whole bunch of little tricks in, from in there. And uh, like ever since I learned it, it was like like everybody's known me for that. Up through high school, people have known me for watch out for cross face cradle, watch out for this. And a cross face cradle. Henderson rolls through. The Even on the best guys, it was like if I wasn't getting it, it would be really close to getting it, and and that would take away from their game. Now in college, I mean, yeah, it's gotten a lot harder to do it. Uh, I still hit it, and like I don't really practice it anymore because I know what to do. It's like it's second nature to me now. Coming in, we had like a little small tournament before Ironman, and then we had Ironman. 140 pounds semifinal. We've got Evan Henderson. From Kiski Prep School, he's in the all-black single. He's taking on Nick Bruschetta. I wasn't even, like, I think I was top, I was, think I was like 50 or something. Like, I was on the bottom half, I remember that. And then I go through and I'm beating these guys, and like, and like no problem. And then I, like, beat this uh, winner, Nick Bruschetta. He's going to move on to the finals tonight. I beat him in the semis, and I was, like, a big win. Everybody's like, holy crap, well, like, who's this kid? And then I go out, and nobody's like, Who's this kid from Kiski Prep? Final. We got Cam Tassari versus Evan Henderson. This is 140 pounds. And certainly Tassari's not used to being ridden like this from bottom. And then all of a sudden I'm up like five five one on this guy on uh, Cam, who's at Ohio State now. Oh, sorry, low shot. Low shot, trying to run him on his hip, trying to turn the corner. It looks like he's got it. He's got he has that ankle free and scores. And Henderson's gonna counter. <laughs> and he's blowing things wide open. They're like, whoa, Cam's never been in this situation. Who is this guy? And then I beat him. And it's like, that, that, there was like, okay, this guy's for real. We had a tough seat, like a, a tough schedule. And, but then at the end of the year, we had Dapper Dan again. And guess who I'm wrestling again? It's Cam Tassari. Oh, 
Sorry, representing the United States. Oh, scramble here. That's Henderson. I was number one, and then I kind of like after those few weeks, I like fell off a little bit, but I'm still up to near the top, like still like top five. Sorry's wrestling. Ah. Henderson gets his hips out though. Henderson, we got a switch battle here. Gets his hips on top. Oh man, that was a sweet combo. And then he moved back up into the number one spot, and then I wrestled him again. And I beat him again, and that was like in front of. That was in front of like a home crowd too. Like it was in, at Pittsburgh, so like everybody like. A lot of my friends came out, family. Awesome match. I was pretty fortunate to get uh, to have a successful career in high school. I was able to win four state titles all the way. All right, we're here at 103 pounds in the finals, 3A, 4A finals. Nathan Kreiser, Centennial, Eli Beanstalk, Quince Orchard. Nathan yes. Kreiser gets the first takedown. Trying to run it. He does run it. He's got it tight. 12 nothing win. Nathan Kreiser is your state champion. My junior year, I was able to win uh, this tournament called the Super 32. It's actually held in North Carolina in uh, Greensboro. I had to win seven matches throughout the tournament and to win the whole thing. I got the opportunity to go to the Pan American Games. I was able to finish with the bronze medal there, so that was, uh, could kind of compare myself to where I was then and where I wanted to be. I had a hole in my heart when I was born. And I got it operated on when I was two years old to fix it because sometimes it, the hole pushes up on its own, but mine stayed there. So they had to uh, operate on uh, when I was two and it went in there. And I uh, just put a piece of cloth in the chamber wall and then the walls ended up building up around it. My parents were really nervous and stuff. There was like a new technique, like surgery for repairing the heart at that time, but it was still like um, not perfected. So we went with the, the older approach, I guess, where you, they actually cut open like your sternum and go inside manually and r repair it that way. Uh, I think I'm fine now. They haven't done anything wrong with me since then concerning my heart. No, I'm drill, whatever you want, but it's got to be hard. Okay, we'll start with the hard drill. There's no more police going out on the My name is Chris Mears, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I wrestle 157 pounds. My name is Tanner Idol, and I'm also from Dallas, Texas. I'm a redshirt sophomore, and I wrestle 174 pounds. Uh, my freshman year, I went to Virginia Tech with Tanner, and we were roommates, actually, for the first semester. And then Tanner hurt his shoulder and ended up transferring out and stuff. But in addition to that, we went to high school together. Yep. And We've before together that, we wrestled on the same youth team, so. We've been wrestling with each other since we were 10 years old. Well, um, I'm icing to bring down the information, and then um, stimming just to basically fire the muscle and kind of release pain a little bit. So, yeah, I'm feeling pins and needles right now, I can't tell. The best part about Carolina is, um, honestly, in my opinion, not only the guys, you know, because the team gets along so well and everyone's, everyone's just backing each other, but the coaches, um, you know, Coach Mock, he brings his own, his own great attributes to the table, and then you got Coach Kolak, he's a great coach. 
as a team, I think that within a couple years we'll be a top 10 team in the country. And I think we're building really fast towards that. We're making really good progression. I'm happy to be a Tar Heel. Maybe yesterday. What the fuck else was that? 1981. This is this is what you look like in 1981. I know, right? He's bigger than me. I was a junior in college. <laughs> so everybody was kind of asking me about this jacket when I came in and what it said on the back. So on the back it says, Jefferson Morgan State Champ 1981, which is crazy because I always say everything's kind of a cycle or a circle. And so this was the jacket I won when I was eight, and now it fits Ryder who's five. So the jacket's 32 years old, and it's kind of cycled back in at the bottom, you know, starting all over. So. Kind of interesting, I guess. Daddy. <laughs> Take you out.
Tana, one more set. Let's go. That's it. 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 That
My name's Alan Henderson. This is my wife Lydia, and uh, we've. Uh, I, I wasn't real impressed with this uh, first period of the match, but uh, he stepped it, it up. Yeah, once he got going, he was all right. He, I think it was just uh, jitters. He's he's qualified already. Uh, we hope he wins the championship here. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah. Now. You know, obviously, he, he made it to the NCAAs last year, but he didn't place. And uh, this year, we're hoping for a All-American status. Carolina's Evan Henderson, who moves on to the Fighters at 141 pounds for the Tar Heels. You can peek from there. Stretch him, stretch him. Wrestle, wrestle!
Anderson leading by three to zero. What's the difference? What's the difference between the team this year and your team in, in prior years? The difference is they got to believe. If everything else is, is great, great coach, great coaches, great workout partners, but they don't believe, it doesn't matter. And if all of those things don't exist and they do believe, you got a really good shot. So the difference to me this year is they bought in, the guys believe. In second place at number 25, the freshman from the University of North Carolina, Nathan Kreiser.